Hello everyone, my name is Rafael Benedicto and I am a freelance 3D character artist. I've mostly worked for small indie game projects and film productions, while in my free time I also work on perfecting my skills in my personal projects on my ArtStation portfolio. In 2020, I was the first place winner of Reillusion's Digital Human Contest with my work Scout Annie. Right now, I'm working with a startup game studio called Nightly Works where I make Dark Souls inspired game characters for their upcoming indie game project called Scars Rise of the Last Keeper. Today, I'll be showing you how I used Reillusion's Auto Setup plugin for 3ds Max to quickly import and set up a CC4 character for rendering and presentation with V-Ray. I'll be using the Last Keeper, the main character for the Scars project, as the subject for this demo. But before we get into auto setup, I'll first give you a very brief rundown of how I made this character, turning a concept illustration into a complete real-time character in CC4, and finally into something that can be rendered beautifully with V-Ray in 3ds Max. The first thing I did was make the base model in Character Creator 4, where I made his face and body according to the concept art. Next, I used the GOZ Plus feature in CC4 to easily transfer the character to ZBrush, where I modeled his armor and clothing. After each armor group is modeled, I used Topo Gun as well as ZBrush's own Z Remesher feature to create low poly versions of the parts. I used Rhizome UV for unwrapping before importing them back into Topo Gun, where I baked their normal maps and ambient occlusion maps. These maps were used as part of the texturing process in Substance 3D. After the texturing was completed, the armor part was finally imported into Character Creator and fitted onto the base character. The cloth objects like the pants, the cape, and the loincloths were made in Marvelous Designer and were also textured in Substance 3D and imported into Character Creator to complete the character. The hair I used was the long curls hair from a hair pack but I changed it a bit so that the hair would fit into the helmet. Finally, I transferred the skin weights from the body onto the individual pieces of armor and clothing so that they're now also skinned to the bones and could move along with the body. After everything is done, I exported the entire character as an FBX file and made sure that I selected 3ds Max in the preset options. So we're now in 3ds Max and I already have the auto setup plugin installed. The first thing I did was open up the auto setup window and placed it alongside the command panel to the right. I loaded up the FBX file that was exported from Character Creator, selected V-Ray GPU as my renderer, and clicked on the import button. After 2-3 to three minutes, the character is imported complete with a rigged skeleton with all the skin weights from CC4 intact. All the materials from CC4 were also converted into V-Ray materials ready to go. The first thing I did after the import process was to test out the look dev presets on the first tab of the auto setup panel. There are 10 preset buttons that automatically create a complete set of lights, a camera, and a background for my scene. For added convenience, there is even a dummy helper object that allowed me to easily rotate all the lights in the scene in one go. So the first thing I noticed with this first test render is that the background is green. 
When I check what material was applied to it, it seems to be the 3ds Max physical material shader, which V-Ray GPU doesn't support. When I made another test render with V-Ray CPU, i.e. the regular V-Ray, the material is rendered correctly. Since I like using V-Ray GPU because of its speed, I found myself having to apply the V-Ray MTL shader every time I change the look dev setup, which is an unfortunate minor inconvenience. You might also notice that his long hair and facial hair doesn't look right either. It has a lot of white streaks when all his hair is supposed to be dark brown, but I managed to fix that later. Right now, I'm focused on setting up the lights for testing. I tested out some more light presets, but I eventually settled on the first one because I don't want anything too crazy for this particular character. As you can see, based on these first test renders, the materials for the armor parts are pretty much flawless. The colors look right, the reflectivity looks right, the roughness looks right, the metallicity looks right, and the bump maps look right as well. Aside from that minor thing, I was pretty satisfied with how the materials for the armor parts turned out. I only had to change a few things in the material editor for compatibility reasons with VUA GPU, such as the opacity maps being linked to a mix map, which VUA GPU also doesn't support, and linking the opacity map directly into the opacity node of the shader. However, when I did another test render, the skin looks way too smooth, almost like the normal maps are not functioning on the skin shader. When I opened up the material editor, the skin material is suffering from the same compatibility issues with VBA GPU I've faced on the armor parts. The culprit seems to be the fact that the V-Ray OSL text node that the main normal maps are linked to is linked to another V-Ray OSL text node, which handles the auto setup wrinkle system. I tried bypassing this second node and linked the first one directly to the V-Ray normal map mode, which links to the bump slots of the skin shader. I did another render, and lo and behold, the skin is finally bumpy. And so I put his helmet back on and continued testing. So with those compatibility issues out of the way, let's move on to the next tab in the Auto Setup window. Auto Setup conveniently allows me to alter the properties of the materials without needing to go through the Material Editor. There are sliders for the skin SSS, the normals intensity, the roughness, etc. If I click on the character's hair, the sliders in the materials tab changes to accommodate the different types of settings that are relevant to the hair. If I click on the head mesh, the settings in the tab changes into skin settings. Same goes when I click on the eyes, the teeth, and the tongue. However, it's unfortunate that not everything can be done in the auto setup material sliders. For example, on the eyes. The eyes needed to have these glowing pupils in the middle, but there aren't any options to do that in the auto setup material tab. So I simply opened up the material editor and added a texture map in the self illumination node of both eyes materials to make his pupils glow. Now for the hair. As I said earlier, the hair materials needed editing to remove those really bright streaks on them. Fortunately, it was a simple fix by adjusting the roughness slider on the materials tab. I did the same on his facial hair as well.
For now, I wanted to move on to his pose. To do this, I first needed to check the character's rigging and skinning. The character is already rigged straight from CC4. If I unhide all the objects, the bones can be seen. However, I prefer to use 3ds Max's cat rigging system for my workflow. In the auto setup window, I go to the rigging tab to create a cat rig on top of the regular bones that already exist. The cat bones do not replace the regular bones, but rather the regular bones get linked to the cat bones that were created on top of them. So when I manipulate the cat bones, the regular bones follow them, and in turn, the skinned parts follow as well. I just had to remember that if I wanted to adjust the skinning, the model is still skinned to the regular bones, not the cat bones. So I just had to keep that in mind. Here's how I posed the character according to the game director's input. Now that the pose is settled, the game director wanted me to put some expression on his face. With the auto setup face rig controls, this is easily achieved. The auto setup's import process also includes all the facial blend shapes that were present in Character Creator. So if I go to the face rig tab in the auto setup window, I can easily use these controllers to manipulate individual regions of the character's face and create his desired expression. After doing some more test renders, I realized that the hair quality was holding it back. If you noticed in these renders, the hair was looking really janky because of the way it was skinned. And there's also the fact that polygon-based hair can only go so far in terms of looking realistic. Too much bending or other kinds of distortions can make polygon hair cards look ugly. So as much as I wanted to keep the polygon based hair cards so that I don't have to do more work than necessary, I decided to replace them with Ornatrix hair. I've done this sort of thing before. Use CC4 hair for the initial testing and look dev, and then later replace it with Ornatrix hair for the final rendering, as seen on my previous works such as Scout Annie, Urban Ranger, and my Lucy Cyberpunk fan art. The hair cards used for the facial hair were actually still pretty good, so I kept them, as there was no need to replace them with Ornatrix hair. I still had to end up remaking his cape and cloth in Marvelous Designer though. But now that the materials, pose, and expression is finalized, I created a dome light with HDRI lighting downloaded from polyhaven.com. I also created his environment in 3ds Max and ZBrush and did a few more test renders. And once the game director was satisfied with the setup, I was ready to render the final turntable and close-up shots. As we watch the fully rendered turntable shots, I'll give my conclusions on my experience. The auto setup plugin was extremely useful for me in this project because it saved me a lot of time. I have to be clear, it does not automatically make things perfect. It's not an end-all be-all solution to importing stuff from CC4. 
I still had to spend some time modifying some of the materials in the material editor to make them work better. What auto setup does, and it does this wonderfully, is save me days worth of work by initially setting up the materials, the rigging, and other technical things for me in just a few clicks, so that I may quickly move on to the creative part of my work, such as posing the character, setting his expressions, fine-tuning the skin and hair materials, etc. In terms of reliability, the Auto Setup plugin also seems to be very reliable and stable. Throughout this entire project, I have not experienced any crashes due to the plugin. So if you haven't used Auto Setup yet, and you're just like me, who used to spend at least a couple of days setting up all the technical things in 3ds Max manually before finally getting to do some actual creative work, then I highly recommend the plugin to you. It's a free plugin and it's readily available for download in Reillusion's website or from the Reillusion hub. Thank you for watching and I really hope you got something useful from this video. And also a big thanks to Reillusion for sponsoring this video. And thanks to my client at Nightly Works for allowing me to use their character for this demo. Take care now.